A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. From the step with love. Start drawing a line with a pencil from the edge of the paper and draw it all the way to the other edge. After that, write sky above the line and land beneath it. This picture will show you the sights of the Trans-Ural Steppe. He sent such funny drawings to his friends. This personality was incredibly talented and his life story was surprising. He was the first author whose stories about Kazakh life were published in European magazines. He is called the first Turkologist and a founder of the Kazakh State Museum. Dal was a founder of the museum. We have some exhibits which have been here for over a hundred years. They belonged to the Orenburg Museum previously. He was a man of Danish descent who became known as the author of the first Russian explanatory dictionary. He was a naval officer who couldn't overcome seasickness. Although he was a polyglot speaking 12 languages, he couldn't speak Danish, his known native language. We will present unknown details about Vladimir Dahl in the steppe. He was a very inquisitive and benevolent person, which is why he was interested in the details of Kazakh life. He noticed the subtleties and varieties of customs and traditions and understood how they were followed. He did military service as a special assignment officer in the steppe region as a researcher for eight years. Chapter 1, A Danish Nomad. A Kazakh, who I made friends with, wanted to help me and asked me to take his camel. What should I do with it? I asked him. Do you have a house? Yes, I do. It will transport your house. My house isn't portable and can't be moved. Oh, it must be so boring in your house, the Kaisak said, shaking his head compassionately. Take this camel and try to move your house to another place. It would be much more interesting. It's difficult to notice the small house behind the multi-story buildings covered in snow in Moscow. There's a bust at the entrance. The gloomy old man with a long beard bothered the coachman, demanding that they explain the words he didn't understand and then spent nights working on his dictionary. The common misconception of Vladimir Dahl bears little relation to reality. Dahl managed everything he took up. He had a huge nose and clever gray eyes, was always calm and smiling. He had a rare talent for voice and gesture imitations. He was very calm and serious when performing extremely hilarious scenes. He could imitate the buzzing of flies, mosquitoes, incredibly accurately. The talented comedian arrived in Orenburg after his marriage, when he was a bit over 30. He was sociable, witty, could sing very well, and played musical instruments. It's said that he even mastered playing the dombra. This person was really interested in everything. Being a skilled carver, he made figurines from glass. He was literally a jack of all trades. Dahl had a unique talent for carrying out operations using his right and left hands at the same level. Well, it's better to say he did it brilliantly. Can you imagine that although Dahl was an official, naturalist, ethnographer and writer, he never parted with his medical instruments? He was considered the second best surgeon in the whole empire after the famous Pirogov surgeon. He performed one of the first operations in Orenburg, thanks to which the life of Lev Sokolov, hero of the War of 1812, was saved. When Dahl's wife died, he married Sokolov's daughter. Being a widower, he turned to the Orenburg Spiritual Council, asking for permission for a second marriage with Sokolov's daughter. The Orenburg archive holds documents saying that Dahl was a husband, official, researcher and doctor. 
He carried out a lot of operations in the steppe and nomads' territories. Vladimir said that he went there on business trips. He came and before holding a conversation about any business, he visited his patients, performed operations and gave advice. In addition, he made it a habit not to take money for medical work since his salary was quite high. He was an eye specialist and a surgeon. Mikhail Mikhailov was a guide, writer, Democrat, Chernyshevsky's associate, translator and poet. His mother was the descendant of a famous Kaisak clan. He had been born half blind. Vladimir Dahl performed an operation on his eyes and saved his eyesight. Descriptions of some surgery he performed were included in textbooks of medicine. He was a pioneer in several fields. For instance, Dahl was the first doctor who studied the health benefits of kumus, or horse's milk. Kumus helps to treat chronic lung disease. The benefits become noticeable in a week after patients start consuming this healthy, nutritious and low-calorie drink, or even earlier. Patients who drink it, feel invigorated, can breathe easily and have healthy complexions. Is there any other food which can substitute kumus in this regard? In Orenburg, Dahl became interested in homeopathy and started applying it. He appreciated folk medicine and visited wizards in Kazakh villages. He managed to give scientific explanations to many medical prescriptions. He even cured his own son Arslan with Junga roots. However, he wasn't able to save his first wife, who died in Orenburg. Chapter 2. Intolerably Honest. A hero of the war of 1812, Ayman Baibatirov met with the poet Plesheyev, knew Perovsky and was Dahl's friend. Probably he accompanied Vladimir when they visited Kazakh villages in the steppes. He studied the life of the Ural Cossacks and Kazakhs thoroughly. Luckily, his official duties and his own interests coincided, which is why he often used his official position. For example, he did this to conduct literary experiments. He described his official duties thoroughly. He continued building his literary career in Orenburg. After he left Orenburg, he wrote less. Actually, he became a famous writer thanks to the works he wrote in Orenburg. He was a special assignment officer under the military governor, Vasily Perovsky, and dealt with difficult and complicated situations. When he arrived in the summer of 1833, he immediately was sent on a business trip to handle the Guriev Pet Merchant's complaint against the Ural Cossacks. The steppe started in Orenburg, spread over Uralsk, and reached Guriev. The infinite steppe spread across the Bouquet Horde. Dahl immediately fell in love with the steppe. This land is a mixture of the unusual, strange, and diverse. It's certain that Dahl was a classical scholar who thoroughly understood the inner life and especially the situation of the Kazakh society. His colleagues called him intolerably honest. He didn't take bribes and was devoted to performing his professional duties zealously. He was appreciated in the steppe. For example, the rebel Isatai Taimanov asked to send honest officials, especially Lieutenant Colonel Dahl. Extract from Dahl's letter to Genghis Khan. I found out that not only Isatai's adherents, but the majority of the Kyrgyz people were driven to despair by the arbitrariness of sultans and leaders who rule the horde. I will only mention that they extort a lot of money under various pretexts. He met with Makhambet Utomisov and Isatai Taimanov. By the end of the first year, he'd been able to speak Bashkir, Tatar, and Kazakh fluently. A local mullah was his teacher. Lev Vasily Arslan was the triple name he gave his son. When a pastor remarked that it was strange to baptize using such a name, Dahl joked that in this case, he'd have to go to the mullah. Most often, Dahl visited the Bouquet Horde, where he was Jangir Khan's guest. However, the majority of his trips and aims have remained unknown. The special assignment officer had special assignments, and his destination was rarely mentioned. I'm living in nomad territory again. It's so beautiful here and I don't want to leave. There are mountains and forests and having walked only 100 steps, you can see a different scenery. He traveled more often than staying at home. 
We stopped at Kaisak Khan's, who had 17 wives, 35 daughters, and four sons. Although the Khan's name was not mentioned, most likely it was Nur Ali. He had a close relationship with Kazakhs. Besides, he socialized with many people who worked among the Kazakhs. Chapter 3, Thursdays at Dals. A contemporary explained that it was a wonderful place and he liked the Transural Grove so much because the city was boring, as there was no entertainment. The only interesting place was the Transural Grove, where you could walk in summer. Everybody said that it was so dull that people took up scientific research to relieve the boredom. In Orenburg, the most popular alternative to card games was meeting at Dals on Thursdays. There was a kind of popular scientific group of interest. The participants read reports on philosophy, history, the Kaisak's origins, and the Turkic languages. Scientists and doctors gathered there. Most educated people of Orenburg met there. The Russian Geographical Society is situated in St. Petersburg. It is said that the idea to found this organization emerged on a Thursday at Dals. Dahl was one of the 12 founders of the Russian Geographical Society. The first meeting of the society was held in Vladimir Dahl's flat. Incidentally, the history of foreign intelligence services was closely connected with the Geographical Society. Although nothing is mentioned about Dahl's role in this area, it is known that when Dahl was correcting the map of the Kazakh steppes, drawn by Zimmerman, he insisted on not changing the Kazakh names. When drawing a map of Serbia, nobody will come up with the idea to change the names of places, rivers and cities into the Russian manner, Vladimir said. His activity played a significant part in not only Russian Oriental studies, but in European Oriental studies as well. Information about Central Asia became available in the late 19th century. Thus, this work demanded a lot of scientific research, and Dahl participated in it. At that time, a lot of scientists thought that the Kazakh language was a dialect of Turkish, or Tatar. Dahl was the first person who told the world scientific community that Kazakh was a separate language. He was very interested in Oriental studies and bought the famous manuscript Genealogy of the Turks by Abu al-Ghazi Bahadur from the residents of Bukhara. He was a meticulous and astute person who was zealous in his work. He was among the organizers of the expedition to the Aral Sea and headed the construction of two large boats. He was a naval officer after all. However, the expedition was undertaken after Dahl left Orenburg. He wrote botany and zoology textbooks, founded the first museum in the region, and collected exhibits for other museums. He sent pelts of unknown animals to the scientific community at that time to St. Petersburg, where stuffed animals were made. In particular, he sent the pelt of a very strange beast, which, according to the quotation, could not be considered a bull or donkey or horse or wolf, and they made a conclusion that it was some strange creature, the project of Windy Nature's Game. In 1838, the Academy of Sciences appreciated Dahl's contribution to natural science and elected him as a corresponding member. Dahl didn't leave the favor unanswered and sent an example of a live sheep from the Kyrgyz steppe as a present to the Academy. Epilogue, a burnt memory. In 1841, Vladimir Dahl moved back to St. Petersburg. Although he intended to write a lot about Kazakh steppes, he couldn't fulfill his aim. He was presented with an ultimatum and had to choose either writing or service. He chose the latter. The notes he made were related to his service and he just burnt all of them. He burnt all his diary entries, a great amount of unique information, which was collected over eight years. Nobody will find out what it cost him to do it. After all, he was a special assignment officer and a lot of his records couldn't be disclosed anyway.